so I am back from having my biopsy. <clears throat> and I said I would let you guys know how that felt and how that ended up being. So it was very busy. Lots of people checking in. The, the radiology department and the, um, the blood lab is right next to the breast center. And you check in there at the radiology. So I got checked in and uh, the lady that checked me in recognized me from the last time I was there, which is basically just a week ago. So, I mean, it makes sense. But so she's like, hey, you know, hi, I, I know who you are. I recognize you. So I was like, what does that say about my life? Re recently, I've been up there enough that the, that the lady in the check-in desk knew, recognized me. Anyway, I went down. There was a lot of people ahead of me, and just everybody was busy. Lots of people going lots of places. But um, the uh, ultrasound tech, um, uh, we'll call her J. Her initial is the letter J. Um, she's the one that did my ultrasound, uh, the first ultrasound. And she also did my friend's ultrasound, and she's the one that booked my appointment. So we have been, you know, this is my third time to see her. We have a rapport going. There is that advantage is, you know, our, my town is big enough to have a great hospital, but small enough that, you know, these people recognize me and, and know me and we get, we get to have a relationship. So anyway, she took me back and it was into the same ultrasound room that I had been in before. And I taken some pictures. Um, I snuck a couple pictures, so I'll, I'll put one of those up here. And basically the ultrasound equipment is to, left to the bed. And the bed is just basically like an emergency room gurney. Um, it has the rails that will pop up on the side if you want them to. Um, although she wouldn't let me do that this time because she had to be able to lean in close to do the ultrasound. Um, last time she allowed me to put one up behind me. It made me feel a lot safer. The, doc, the, the ultrasound was the tech was on my right-hand side. Jay was on my right-hand side. And then Dr. R, she was on my left-hand side. And that's because the the left breast was the one that we did the biopsy in. Anyway, so I got in there and uh, she showed me the bathroom and I knew the routine. She's like, okay, um, everything from the waist up, take off, put on the put on the little the little cape, the little gown thingy, and then come on out when you're ready. And then I went over and sat on the bed and waited for um, Jay to come back. And so she got me settled back. I, well, first of all, she sat down and we talked about the procedure. She explained, she, uh, she said like, well, you probably know what's going on, but do you want me to explain it again? And I asked her to explain it again. I wanted to make sure I understood everything clearly. Um, although <clears throat> she didn't tell me anything I didn't already know, but it made me feel a little bit more in control and I'm a control freak. So that is why I suggested she do that anyway. So she, she sat down, we talked about everything that was that I was going to expect, um, I was able to ask her questions about the medication they were using um, and about um, the soap that she was going to use and just different things like that. Um, those things are important to me because of my chemical sensitivities. Um, so she uh, had me sign the papers and then she propped up the, the bed for me. Um, and then I laid back and she took my blood pressure. Um, I had warned her. I'm like, hey, I have severe white coat syndrome. Um, I will have a normal blood pressure reading at home and you put me in the doctor's office and it jacks up crazy high. Um, and for some reason, when they do my blood pressure reading on my upper arm, it is much higher than when they do it down here. We think, I'll show you, this is not very pretty, but I've lost so much weight. I've got a lot of all this extra skin hanging down. We think that's probably part of the problem. Um, anyway, and my, I take my blood pressure at home every day and mine is a wrist cuff. Um, and I've been given the okay to take my blood pressure with a wrist cuff by my GP and my cardiologist. Um, so that's what we go by. But anyway, so she, um, uh, so she, I was telling her about my history and about, you know, my blood pressure, my blood sugar and all of that. And so she's like, well, I'm going to take your blood pressure anyway. So that's why I said she took, she set the bed up and she went around and she took my blood pressure and she did it on my forearm rather than up here. And we were both very surprised. It was a little high. It was 156 over 90, which is high. You know, they, a normal number is 120 over 80. Um, for me, that was a little high. Usually I don't get any higher, you know, at home, I rarely get anything over 135. Like if I'm stressed out or if I've been exposed to chemicals for a couple of days, my blood pressure will go up. Um, I've documented this multiple times. My GP knows about it. She's totally fine with it. Um, but my 
my diastolic, that's the bottom number, it rarely goes over 80. Um, although when I come into the ER, I've had it go up, my diastolic go up as high as 100. Um, the other day when I went to the uh, gynecologist, it was my diastolic was 100. Um, that's that's stroke level. That's not well. I don't know if that's stroke level, but that's the number they told me. If your diastolic ever goes over 100, you need to come into the ER. So that's that's my that's my number. But anyway, so my blood pressure was like like I said, 156 over 90. It was not bad at all for me, considering how scared I was um, and the white coat syndrome. And so she's like, I I'm totally okay with this. And I'm like, I am too. I'm, that's okay. That's a good number for me, knowing the situation. I had. Um, at that point, I had had my meds, my blood pressure meds had been in my system two hours, and that's usually about the time they kick in for me. Um, so anyway, uh, that was done, and then she laid the bed back down and got me comfortable on the bed. Um, again, they had me lay to my right with a wedge under my back on my left, and I was able to prop my head up with the pillow double because I have uh, some PTSD about laying my head flat. It, it really freaks me out because I've had vertigo and it, it upsets me. So I'm working on getting better about it, though. We're getting there. Um, anyway, so the, she got me all comfortable and did the ultrasound, started the ultrasound, and that's basically opened up my 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 cape and laid a towel over me and got the gel and, you know, took a couple of pictures and she covered me back up and she said, okay, I'm going to go get the doctor and we'll get this thing started. So she left for just a couple of minutes and, uh, well, actually I had to reposition me because I was a little bit close to the edge. It felt like I was going to roll off. So we scooted me back just a tiny bit and then that was much more comfortable for me. And she said, yeah, that she could tell by looking at me, I was more comfortable. And um, anyway, then she came back with Dr. R just a couple minutes later and uh, Jay went around setting everything up. Um, so Dr. R explained to me what she was going to do. And she basically said the same thing that um, Jay had said. And she's like, yeah, and we're also going to do a checkout. And Jay was like, okay, what's your name? What's your date of birth? What are we having done? And she's like, what are we doing today? And I said, you're poking a hole in my boob. <laughs> so we all had a good laugh about that. And um Anyway, so we got that all taken care of. She got all the stuff set up. And so they decided that um, uh, I actually glanced over at my ultrasound and it said something about seven o'clock. And I'm like, oh, I bet they're saying seven o'clock relative to the nipple. That's probably where the duct is that's causing the issue. And she confirmed that later on. So basically she said um, that because um, because of the location of where this um, mass was they she that she felt like the doctor would probably use a smaller gauge needle i had seen other videos where they say that the needle that they use the guide is actually about a 14 gauge and that's that's pretty big um i mean like it's not like a 16 penny nail big but it's you know it's a good size um and actually dr r when she took a look at things she said actually i'm going to do an 18 and so we were right that we figured that, that she'd go smaller and so and then Jay was really good about interpreting everything Dr. R was saying. And she's like, yeah, so you heard Dr. R say that we're going to do an 18 gauge that's smaller than we thought. And so she uh, got the numbing medicine. I was told the numbing medicine would be lidocaine. Um, all the, and then she, actually she said that Dr. R changed it to lidocaine and epinephrine. The reason that she did the, the epinephrine with, in, with it is because that... Um, helps the blood vessel blood vessels to constrict and it keeps the um, bleeding at a minimum. Um, and given, even though I had stopped taking my aspirin, I take daily aspirin, even though I had stopped taking my aspirin five days ago, she felt like that was warranted in my case. So she, uh, they got me all uncovered and they washed me off. They used um, chlorhexidine solution. Uh, I asked what that was. I thought maybe it would be betadine. I've seen videos where they use betadine. Um, in my, in this case, they used chlorhexidine, which is a really mild cleaner. Um, so anyway, uh, Dr. R said, okay, I'm going to give you the injection of the um, lidocaine. And she's like, so I'm going to do it first on the skin. And you'll, she said, you'll feel a little prick and you'll feel it burn. And then after that, we'll let it sit for a couple minutes and then I'll come back and I'll do another injection. It will be in deeper into the tissue and, and, and you shouldn't feel any of that. You might feel a little bit of burning when we get deeper into the tissue, but it wouldn't be bad. And earlier in the conversation, Jay had told me that Dr. R is very liberal with her application of lidocaine. I'm like, good, good. Give me lots and lots of lidocaine. I am fine with that. 
Um, so she started and she warned me, she's like, okay, give me a little stick. And I am not kidding when I say this, I did not feel anything um, when she put the, when she put the needle in, I didn't feel it at all. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Cause I, I have a little bit of neuropathy in different parts of my body. And I think it's from the, um, from having diabetes and possibly from some of my medication. And I've noticed that the neuropathy is in like different places, like the back of my arm and on my belly. So I'm thinking that maybe, um, either this doctor's really, really good. And it was soup and it was a super tiny needle. Um, or I had neuropathy there, but I literally didn't feel anything. It's not one of those things where you say, ah, I didn't feel anything, but you really did. Mm -mm. I did not feel anything when that needle went in. I did feel a tiny bit of burning for the first couple of seconds when she said, okay, I'm going to put a little bit in. And, um, but it was over in a couple of seconds and it was perfectly fine. Um, she, you know, we sat there for a couple more minutes while the doctor was getting things all set up. They covered, like they covered the uh, ultrasound, um, ultrasound wand for lack of a better word. They covered that with plastic and they were doing a few more things, opening packages and getting stuff ready. Um, she warned me that she, she pulled out the machine. I don't know what it's called. The, I should probably look these things up. Maybe I'll look it up and write it on the bottom of the screen right here somewhere. But, um, there's a, it's not an actual machine. It's more like a, it sounds, it's like a gun. It's like made like a gun, like, like an ear piercing gun. It, and it makes a loud click. Um, so basically as I understand it, it is a, a hollow tube that's called the carrier, I think. And they, they put that in, they, and so, and then within that, then they insert the, the actual, um, biopsy needle and that, that takes the, the biopsy. So, um, um, when they do the, they click this thing and it makes the needle rotate and it slices off a little tiny bit of the, of the tissue. Um, and so when that happens, it makes a loud, loud clicking noise. And she demonstrated to me what it was going to sound like. It was actually pretty loud. Um, so that was good. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, just tell me everything that you're doing. Um, so she came back a couple minutes later and she said, okay, we're going to put a little bit more lidocaine in only this is going to be deeper. And so again, I didn't, I literally, I didn't feel any of that, not no burning, nothing. So she went in a little bit deeper, put a little bit more lidocaine in, didn't feel the needle going in, didn't feel a burning, nothing. So, um, she's like, okay, so now we're going to, we're going to start. Um, she didn't say anything. I was expecting there to be a scalpel to do a small cut. She didn't say that's what she was doing. Um, but I suspect that she did because I, I tried not to watch her. I kind of kept my head turned to the side and looked off in the distance. I tried not to watch any of what was going on. I just didn't look at her. <laughs> um, nothing wrong with her. She's a beautiful woman, but it was just like, you know, I don't want to see anything that you're doing. I, at the same time, I was fascinated by it, but I'm like, I don't want to see you doing it on me. So, um, I, I think it's possible that she did make an incision, but then all of a sudden she's like, okay, we're going to put the needle in. Didn't feel anything. I've heard, I've seen videos where they say, well, I felt pressure. I've seen one video where the woman said it hurt like hell. I, I felt you, or, and there was another video, I've seen another video where they talked about where they didn't get the lidocaine in deep enough. They were different places on the breast. I was hoping that because mine was so close to the surface, even though the, the nipple is a very sensitive, sensitive area, I was hoping that maybe that would mean they wouldn't have to go so deep. And that is the case. Although they did come in at an angle. So like, if this is my nipple, they didn't go straight in or straight under. They actually came this way from the breast and went in. Um, so she got the needle in there. And so then she just kept going and she, they were talking about different things. And so they were using the ultrasound. So there was, there was this exchange going on between Jay and Dr. R where they were, you know, talking about where the needle was placed. And at one point Jay said to Dr. R, um, you've overshot the, the, where you need to be. She's like, you need to pull back a little bit. And Dr. R was like, okay. And then she moved around. She's like, okay, is this better? And she's like, and Jay was like, yep, yep, that's perfect. And, you know, so I was really impressed with, the way that Dr. R deferred to Jay on so many things in this procedure. And also afterwards, the same thing happened. And I'll get to that in a minute. But um, there was, you know, no, no conceited nature. Some doctors can be a little bit conceited. I'm sorry. It's, I don't, not all, but some. 
Um, this doctor was very humble and very sweet and lovely, and I appreciate everything she did. And so she ended up taking seven biopsies. And the funny thing was, is that I didn't feel any of it. It didn't hurt. And the only thing that hurt was every time she would click the, the that gun thing, whatever it is, it would be very loud. The sound would travel right to my ear and I, it would hit me in the ear. And I have really sensitive ears and sometimes noises makes my, make my ears hurt. Um, and so the only thing that hurt me was the sound from the gun clicking. So she got it done and she said, okay, we're going to pull the needle out. And that time I felt a little something, but it was not pain. It was more like, well, it was, it was the, it was like the opposite of pressure. It was like the skin going back after the pressure was out. It's like, I felt, it reminded me of like, you know, you go to Sonic and you get a great big drink and it has a plastic lid on the top and you put the, the straw in and you pull the straw out and you can hear that noise that it makes, but you can feel that resistance against the straw when you're pulling it out. And I feel like that's what I was feeling within my breast as she was pulling the, the, um, the guide out. Um, and then, uh, they went ahead and they put an, used another needle to put the marker in. Um, so they put in a marker. Um, in my case, I requested it be titanium. They have one that's titanium and one that's titanium and nickel. And um, I have a nickel allergy. So I was like, uh, let's stick with the titanium. Um, in my case, we could choose whatever shape we wanted. I chose the awareness ribbon. They had the awareness ribbon and a heart in the titanium. There's different shapes. Um, I think I think I saw one that's a buckle, and that I I saw a video that somebody made, and they showed that theirs was a little awareness ribbon. I'm like, that's what I want. I want the awareness ribbon in there, um, because I I have had endometrial cancer, and so I do use the endometrial uh, cancer, which is orange. Uh, gynecological cancers is orange, so I use an orange awareness ribbon for that. And I was like, it will work for this. So I could have done the heart and I might've done the heart if I had thought about it ahead of time. But so anyway, they, they injected it. it is, they put the needle in and they injected that. And then she pulled that out. I didn't feel anything. The doctor, um, she said, well, you're not bleeding at all, but I'm going to put some pressure on this. So she put a little pressure on it and then they got me cleaned off. And uh, Dr. R, you know, we talked for a couple minutes. She gave me some instructions about everything. And um, she, uh, you know, said thank you. And I told her thank you and God bless and I'll see you later. And so then Jay finished up with me. She put a couple of steri strips um, to cover the, uh, the incision. She said the incision is no more than two centimeters. It's a tiny, tiny little incision. And I would show you a picture if I could, but I don't know how to take a picture of my breast without getting myself in trouble and nobody wants to see that so it's basically all I can see are two steri strips side by side it, they actually overlap the, the 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 um the incision it is literally the steri strips are acting like a bandage at this point so um they got that done and I had um let me I probably should have mentioned this before but um the first time after I had the ultrasound, they warned me that I would not be able to take a shower for 24 hours afterwards. And because of my chemical sensitivities, I have to take a decontamination shower after I'm out and about now. Um, but it helps me to get all the stuff off my skin as quickly as possible. It helps me to not be as sick. So I had asked them, I'm like, can, can we do this if I get, if we use Tegaderm? The, the main reason is they didn't want any water to get into the incision that increases the chance of infection. They want 24 hours for it to close up and then you can have a shower. So I asked about the Tegaderm and um, she said no, that they didn't have any Tegaderm. Uh, when we went back to schedule it, I asked again, I'm like, what if I buy my own Tegaderm? And so she asked Dr. R ahead of time and she said, yes, that would be fine. So when, after Jay had me all bandaged up, I had brought my own Tegaderm. She and, uh, brought the pa package with me. And so she opened up the package and I had bought um, a six by eight and I'll put a picture here. I bought, I bought a package of 10 six by eight Tegaderm pa uh, patches. So what, Tegaderm is, it's basically, it's like, um, it's like saran wrap with adhesive on one side and it, it comes in a specific way. You have, you, you pull the package out and you take it out as a paper backing on it. So basically you pull the, the thing off and then that exposes the sticky side and you position it 
and then you pull the paper backing off of that and then there's a window it's called a window and around the edge of the of the tegaderm there is a, a strip so that once you can get everything positioned and then you can pull that paper off from around the strip um, and that allows you to get this put where it needs to go. And basically it makes a waterproof seal. So Jay got it on me. Um, I wasn't sure what size to get. So I decided to get the six by eight. That's it's pretty big, but it actually worked out perfectly because it was perfect enough. I have a, I have a size. I wear a size B cut bra. Um, the six by eight covered the, everything, the incision perfectly well and then gave me a little bit of room around the breast just so that there was plenty of room. So that way when I went to pull it off, I didn't have to worry about hurting something. So she got that applied and what she did is she laid, so they had the steri strips and then they took a, a, a four by four piece of gauze and they folded it in, in quarters and put that on top of it and put the tape on it to create kind of like a pressure dressing. And then she put two more big four by four um, pieces of gauze on top of that over my, my nipple and the, and the, um, incision site and then she put the tegaderm down. The reason she did it that way was so that when I pulled the tegaderm up it would take those two pieces of gauze rather or that one piece of gauze rather than the gauze that was covering the steri strips. She told me she's like in all honesty the way these are covered up you can actually once you get home and you take the tegaderm off you can take this other bandage off and just don't worry about it just don't get it wet. Um, I can take a shower tomorrow and after 11 o'clock tomorrow, I can get it wet. It's no problem. And she said that as far as the sturdy strips go, just leave them alone. They'll fall off on their own. Um, she said, now, if they start to irritate my skin, I can take them off, but to be very careful when I do. And uh, she warned me what to watch for as far as signs of infection. She told me what to do. She like, if it starts to swell or anything like that, because I think she was referring to probably a hematoma. Um, if, you know, gave me all the instructions of what to do, but so she, she had me all covered up with a sturdy strip and then she's like, okay, uh, uh, with the tegaderm. And so then she's like, okay, so let's get you set up. So she, oh, she took my blood pressure again and it was coming down. And at that point it was like one, 150 over 80 at that point. And she said she could hear it actually at about 120 or 130. She's like, you're probably borderline normal right now. And she's like, it's coming down. She's like, the adrenaline is wearing off. And I'm like, yep, <laughs> it is. And um, this hospital is kind of like a safe place for me. There's, I, I would not go into Walmart for nothing. I wouldn't go into the, the my local mall. I wouldn't go into one of my local churches or anything like that because there's so many uh, chemical scents. But this, this part of the hospital is, is a perfectly wonderful safe place for me. So I don't mind being in there. It doesn't scare me. It doesn't freak me out. So it makes sense that my blood pressure would come down. So anyway, uh, she got me all cleaned up and got the tegaderm where it needed to go. She took my blood pressure. She got me set up and uh, helped me sit up. I wanted some help with that. I wanted to make sure I was okay. Everything was fine. Um, we talked about a couple more things. She gave me some paperwork. And because of um, the hospital that I belong to, or that I go to, my Mercy, all of my doctors, are, with the exception of my GP, all of my doctors are part of the Mercy system. So all of my test results, all of my procedure notes, everything comes to my email to the central location and this hub, this information hub. Um, my blood work was actually, my blood work doesn't go there, but um, it goes to Quest, but I'm able to see that through them as well. So anyway, she warned me that my test results would probably come in through my uh, my, my Mercy account, um, even though they have me set up. Today's Monday. They have me an appointment for Wednesday to come in and talk to the radiologist about what was found. Um, I'm not sure if I speak with with the radiologist or if I speak with the ultrasound tech. I'm not sure who I speak with. But anyway, I have an appointment set for Wednesday, but uh, Jay warned me that the results may come in ahead of time. So she gave me a, uh, a sheet, uh, an information sheet that had a list of all the different terms that we might see. And I think it's very important the way they've laid it out. There's like, these are, the, so your results will either be benign or... Um, I forget what the word it starts with the letter I, and I'm not sure why I can't remember the word, but, or it could be something that is something of interest. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word. And then the other thing is it could be malignant. And it listed all the terms that would indicate that what they found was benign. And then they listed all the terms in this one section, er the area of interest, because these are things that while they are benign now, these are things that are either associated with malignancy or often will turn into malignancy. So these are things that, while it's not a malignant 
cancer, these are things that oftentimes require surgery or further treatment. Um, and the, the thing that we suspect, we suspect the intraductal papilloma, that is in that group. And I already knew that, but it was kind of like confirmation. And then the final one is the malignant, and it lists all the different things about the about the malignant types of things they might find. Um, so I read that, you know, while I was waiting. Um, she also gave me discharge information, what to watch for, that I can take Tylenol, and I can start taking my aspirin again tomorrow morning, and all, all of the information. It was very informative. Uh, she told me to get dressed, and that somebody would be back here in just a little bit to... Um, take me down for my um, mammogram because they they do a very light mammogram just to make sure that the marker is placed in the proper place. So I got myself changed. Um, I did sneak a picture of my ultrasound and I'm going to post that here so you can see that. It just showed some of the images that they took. Um, and so then I got dressed and I sat there and waited for them to come back. Um, I got, I, at that point, I, they had given me. Um, an ice pack, which here's a picture of it. I think it's kind of cute. Um, and she actually gave me a little bit of paper tape to take home because I didn't have any at home and I, I need to get some um, just in case I need to reapply a dressing or something. And um, then my discharge notes and all the information. And so I just put all that into my clothing bag and, the, you know, just sat there waiting on the person to come and get me for the mammogram. And actually Jay took my, my path, all my, um, my biopsy sample straight down to pathology. Then we are so blessed that the hospital that I go to, they have a pathology lab. They have a path lab right there. Um, so she came back and she's like, "Oh, it looks like she hasn't come to get you yet. Let me go see what's going on." And so the uh, the the lab tech, the mammogram tech, she had had a client in there, so she was just finishing up. Um, but Jay took me back to her, and they had me come in and put my stuff down. I had to leave my top on my, my, you know, my cape. And so Jay gave me another cape and put it on me backwards so that I was covered, which I appreciated. Um, and so I still had my, my clothes in the bag. So when I say I got dressed, I hadn't done that yet. I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, I went down to the mammogram room, set all my stuff in the changing room and went in. Um, they put a little sticker to show where the nipple was, although she had a hard time seeing it because it was covered with the gauze and the tegaderm. Um, and so they just did a really quick, very gentle, hardly any pressure, just very gentle, didn't hurt. And at that point I was still riding the lidocaine wave, so it, I didn't feel anything. So she took aside the, the top to bottom compression and then they turned the machine and they did it side to side compression. And she checked the lab, the, the, the film, and she told me I could go. All I had to do was get dressed and she showed me the door and showed me where to go. And, uh, I was done. It took a full two hours. They they told me it would take about two hours. And I think that if the mammogram room had not been busy, it would not have taken quite as long because um, I had to wait about 20 minutes for that. But, it, it, you know, we planned for two hours. It worked out great. Um, I walked out. I was steady on my feet. Um, everything went fine at that point, went home. Um, we actually picked up some, had a couple of errands to run. I picked up some prescriptions for my other meds that had nothing to do with this and picked up some groceries and came home. Um, so now it's four or five hours later and, um, I am feeling a little bit of pain right now. I'm not going to lie about that. It hurts a little bit. It's just achy. It feels like, like if I had pinched myself, like maybe, you know, shut my boob in, the, in a drawer or something. I don't know. Not that I've ever done any of that, but I'm just saying it's not a horrible pain. I expected it to be very painful. In all honesty, if I had no problem with taking Tylenol, I could probably take the Tylenol and it would be nothing. Um, I don't like to take any more chemical meds than I absolutely need to. The only thing that I'm having issues with is because I am... I've talked about this previously. My my breasts are flat because I've lost so much weight. The skin is stretched, and I'm such a small cup anyway, so they're very they're very deflated. So oftentimes when I'm sitting with my arms crossed, I'm putting pressure on the left side, and so that's the only thing that hurts. If I forget and I will kind of squish it, it hurts a little bit. And I have I've gotten my ice pack out once, and I've put it on there. I'm probably gonna go get it here in a couple more minutes just to put it on there. It, they said that it helps with the uh, helps it to not bleed and I don't want it to bleed. So I'm going to keep doing that and it does help with the pain a little bit, but definitely um, at this point, I'm pretty sure that all the lidocaine is completely worn off. So if the pain doesn't get any worse than this, then I'm going to be fine. 
Um, if it does get worse, I do have my Tylenol. She did say in my case that I could take Tylenol or Motrin. Um, I don't take Motrin. Um, um, so I've got the Tylenol if I need it. I've got the ice pack and everything's okay. There's no swelling or anything. Now they did tell me there would definitely be bruising. There's no way to do this without it causing bruising. So, um, so when you're watching these videos, I, I would like to encourage you to know that, um, while we are all different and our bodies are different in the the way, the shape and the density of our breasts and the location of what you're having biopsied will affect how it feels. I'm just here to tell you, it really and truly did not hurt. Hardly. I mean, I, I felt zero pain. I felt a little bit of burning. Right now I'm feeling a little bit of pain, a little bit of achiness, but it's certainly, I mean, it's not bad at all. Um, I admit I have a fairly high pain threshold, so that may make the difference. And it was anxiety producing, but it was over very quickly. Um, the actual procedure itself didn't take more than 10 minutes. Um, it was getting me ready and, and everything like that and afterwards. So, you know, that took a little bit of time, but now I'm all done. I'm really glad I did it. Now the hard part is to sit and wait and see what the results are. Um, the other thing is going to be to keep me off of the um, my Mercy account because I'm sure they'll tell me your results are in and my inclination is to look at them and research it, but I want to really wait and, and, and until I go up and talk to them and let them tell me what they found. Um, we'll see if I can manage it. Don't know if I can. I guess if I can't by the time this video comes out, I'll be able to tell you. Um, and so my plan at this point is that if... Uh, the I will probably make a third video explaining what the results were and what the next step are. And and if there is any kind of a surgery or anything like that coming up, those will be a couple more videos, obviously. But so this is me explaining what my ultrasound guided core biopsy of my breast was like. And I hope that it helped. Um, so if you have a question, put it in the comments below. If I have the answer, I will tell you. Um, if I don't have the answer, I'll tell you that too. Because... Ain't no shame in not knowing something. <laughs> and uh, just know that I'll be praying for you if you, if you need prayers. And um, just God bless. And thanks for watching. Bye.